This one comes with lots of decal. I like this very, very much. Hey there guys, welcome back to Hearns TV. It's me again, Dan, and I'm gonna take you through an unboxing video for a really, really cool model kit. I really like this one, and um, yeah, I think that, um, I think you guys will like this one as well. Now, pleased to be meeting the FJ2 Fury, which is one of the most short-lived uh, fighter planes in, uh, in history actually. So a little bit about the FJ-2 Fury. Um, by 1951, the United States realized that their straight-wing jet aircraft were no match for the Soviet MiG-15 uh, in the skies over Korea, and um, they needed swept-wing fighters that had better performance to, um, yeah, get air superiority back into their favor. And the U.S. Navy had um, swept wing fighters in the pipeline like the F9F Cougar and the absolutely disastrous F7U Corsair but they needed an interim one and in the meantime the F86 Sabre which is the Air Force fighter um, in Korea that uh, was tangling with the uh, MiG-15 they chose that as the as the basis for an interim fighter for the Navy but the Navy wasn't too keen on that idea to, to there were a lot of reasons like inter-service rivalry, but um, the F-86 was never meant for um, naval operations. It was not uh, designed for anything like that at all. And the demand for the F-86 was so high uh, that the 200 FJ-2 Furies that were going to be delivered to the Navy by the end of 1953, the end of the conflict, only seven of them were uh, actually delivered to the Navy and uh, the remainder were actually given to the United States Marine Corps. But um, well, that's, I think that's enough about the Fury for the moment. Let's have a look at this kit and it is really cool. Uh, Kitty Hawk models. Now, um, I've told you about Kitty Hawk models before. Uh, it's a shame they're no longer with us, but great kit. Beautiful box art too, beautiful artwork. Like the one thing about the FJ2, well, the, one thing about the Fury was, what an attractive aircraft it was. If you put like this, or even the F-86, you put it next to a MiG-15, the MiG-15 looks kind of like a tractor that got um, modified to fight. Whereas this looks more like a sports car that got modified to fight. It definitely wins in the uh, looks department. But I'll move that box to the side. We'll start off, have a look at the instruction manual. Once again, Kitty Hawk. Uh, I love the color scheme, uh, the colorful, uh, attractive uh, instruction booklets. Um, all, all little bits of effort in um, in putting kits out there are always, always good. It always makes it always makes it a little bit better. Here, uh, just the opening parts of the uh, of the instructions where you have the cockpit. Now, one of the differences between the FJ2 Fury and the F86 Sabre is right here on the first page. Now, the F86 had a total of six, that's three on either side of the noses near the air intake. 12.7 um, uh, millimeter machine guns, whereas the FJ-2 had a total of four, so two on either side, 20 millimeter cannons. Um, yeah, you get hit by 20 millimeter cannon shells and that's going to ruin your day. And ah, here we have now, next over the landing gear. Um, near the front of the aircraft here with the air intake. Uh, another subtle difference from the FJ-2 to the F-86, the nose of the aircraft was actually lengthened a little bit to make way for larger landing gear, larger and much more sturdy landing gear. Um, landing on aircraft carriers is a very, very punishing process on um, on the on the uh, on the wheels and the landing gear and the aircraft itself, Navy planes always have to be just that little bit tougher than uh, than their Air Force counterparts. And we'll go cut through to yeah, let's have a look at this, the um, the uh, the paint scheme and um, all of the uh, all of the insignias. What an attractive plane! Here you can see the where, where the two uh, firing ports were. Uh, and the obvious insignias for the US Marine Corps 
Ah, yeah, VFM 312V, meaning fixed wing aircraft, Marine Corps Fighter Squadron 312. I think this was, they were called the checkerboard. This actually goes over to here, as you can see. And the tail from there actually is the front part of that. That's why you, you take the instructions out, set them off to the side. I think that was in the other one I explained, which was the, um, one of the UH-60 variants. But yeah, excellent, uh, excellent instructions. Very easy to, very easy to follow. But I think let's have a look at the kit itself. Now, chuck those over there. And here, yes. Here, this is where you have um, the nose section. Once again, the two firing ports for the 20 millimeter guns. A good thing about this kit is you can have um, the aircraft with the panels closed, or you can have them open where you can see the, the ammunition feed uh, for, the, for the 20 millimeter guns. And under here, the under the fuselage, this is where the landing gear would, uh, would recess into the body and the covers for the firing ports there. Now, what else? We've got more of the FJ2 right here. Well, ah, this is where the air brakes would deploy on the uh, rear part of the fuselage there. Excellent details here, actually. You can see all of the hydraulics on the inside. Very, very good. And here the, um, the uh, turbine blades on the jet as well. And here's the, the engine itself. You can um, actually have the engine outside of, um, outside of the aircraft sitting next to it as a small feature. Excellent model this. And here we have the 20 millimeter cannons right there. And let's have a look. Ah, extended fuel tanks and the landing gear. And, uh, and here, the, as you can see, the, the stronger, thicker struts for the, um, for the landing gear as well to take the impact of uh, landing on the carrier. And Aimnide Sidewinder, very early versions of the Sidewinder, short range heat seeking missile. And um, yeah, and the arrestor hook for recovery on carrier aircraft. Now, the Fury was um, actually by the time the they were being made in enough numbers to uh, be deployed, the US Navy had decided it would go with the uh, better low speed performance of uh, the F9F Cougar. And the FJ-2 was handed directly over to the Marines uh, and was going to be used as a land-based uh, fighter and uh, close air support for the uh, Marine Corps. However, they did try to uh, rectify some of the uh, things that didn't make it so good uh, to operate on carriers like a stronger arrestor hook and um, with the um, you know tougher landing gear, which ended up adding a total of 500 kilos to the overall weight and uh, they could never just iron, iron it out. It was never quite as good as they needed it to be. Um, and like I said, the Cougar had better low speed, uh, low speed handling and it was uh, easier to land. So by 1956, after three or four short years, it was retired from frontline service altogether and put into reserves. And by 1957, it was gone from uh, reserves. So. Not too many people actually know about the uh, about the FJ2 Fury or the Sea Saber, as it was called, which is a shame. It's a very beautiful aircraft. But before we wrap this up, let's have a look at at the decal. And this one comes with lots of decal. I like this very very much. Now you've got clearly the obvious insignia of um, the US. The U.S. military here, but you get so many uh, different squadrons that uh, that you can do so many different uh, patterns that um, that you can put um, onto the finished onto the finished model, like when we saw in the instruction book uh, earlier for the um, how, how it would turn out. It's really good that they you have so much that you have so much to choose from. I'm very impressed about that as well. And finally, 
of course, the canopy. Yeah, the canopy, a bubble canopy. Excellent field of view, actually. Very good field of view for the pilots. And you even get little ground crew, like this. These two little resin guys, if you're going to make a little diorama of um, the flight deck for, uh, yeah, have these guys running around, uh, fixing it and helping the pilot. All right, once again, thanks for tuning in to Hearns TV, guys. Um, I love making these videos. I don't try and make them too long, but uh, yeah, just keep them short and short and simple. Get the point across. Give you a good look at the the model and let you know what the uh, what the plane's all about. But yeah, once again, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you have any uh, model kits that you would like for me to do an unboxing, uh, just mention it in uh, the comments. Uh, section below on on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and, and subscribe. Um, I always look forward to seeing you guys in store sometime soon. And as always, rock and roll, baby. See you next time.